Welcome, Denise Dresser. Big news in that Elba Esther Gordillo, the head of the teachers' union uh, since 1979, has been arrested. Uh, since 1989, has been arrested. Uh, she's gone overnight from one of the most powerful power brokers in Mexico to an inmate. Why now? What's the significance of this? Well, I view it as a clear political move on the part of Enrique Peña Nieto, Mexico's new president, to send out a series of messages, multiple messages, uh, to different actors. He's sending out a message to foreign investors, to uh, international observers, to skeptics of um, whether or not he'd be a true reformer, given that He's part of, of the political system that the former ruling party, well, now party in power, the PRI, created. I mean, one of the questions that has accompanied him into office is whether or not he'd be willing to take on the past, take on the vested uh, system of interest, whether he'd be willing to take on the corporatist pillars of support that the PRI had relied on for so many years. So he's sending out a message that he is willing to do that. And it's reminiscent of when Carlos Salinas took on the head of the oil workers union early on in his own presidency in order to obtain legitimacy, electoral legitimacy that he didn't have, plus political legitimacy as a reformer. So um, Peña Nieto is, is, is taking something from the Salinas playbook which was very effective at the time. Salinas was viewed as, a, as an extremely successful president. So Peña Nieto is emulating that political move, which also sends out a message to other uh, corporatist leaders who could be accused of exactly the same thing that El Bester Gordillo is accused of, of illicit enrichment, of transferring funds from the union into their private accounts. The head of the oil workers union, Carlos Romero de Shams, comes to mind. So uh, Peña Nieto is sending the message that watch out or you'll be next. Uh, with this move, he is going to be able to enforce party discipline and get others in the corporatist system who might have been ambivalent about, for example, reforms to Femex, energy reform, to be on board. Because um, one of the things that Peña Nieto is doing, which as political scientists we learn is very effective, is you keep a heterogeneous coalition together when you keep everyone guessing. And now he's going to keep everyone in the corporatist, corrupt, old system guessing as to who will be next. And that will create powerful incentives for discipline vis-a-vis -vis him. And that's why we haven't seen mass mobilizations by the teachers' union. We saw them elect a very compliant teacher who has now said that he's on board for Peña Nieto's educational reform. And the timing of this is also significant. It comes one day after Congress, um, uh, uh, one day after Peña Nieto uh, actually enacted what Congress had approved in terms of Mexico's educational reform. And the arrest comes one day before the teachers' union was going to have its own national congress, where the prediction was that it would devise or plan out strategic mobilizations to bring that reform down. So Peña Nieto has acted to prevent um, opposition from burgeoning vis-a-vis -vis the educational reform that he had pushed. So he's sending out multiple messages to multiple audiences in what is, I think, a very clear political move designed to centralize power, bolster his presidency, send out the image of a reformist who's distancing himself from the old system and easing the way for further structural reforms that might have been vetoed by other corporatist leaders who now will definitely toe the line. Thank you, Denise Dresser. Thank you.